In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use the Compare Frequencies plugin for the Butter Text Analysis software. What this plugin will do is take frequency lists from different data sets and calculate a bunch of comparison statistics so that we can find out which words are unique to each data set and which words are common or shared between them, statistically speaking. Now, this data set will build, I'm sorry, this plugin works with data sets that are created largely by the frequency list plugin. So I'll be moving kind of quickly through the frequency list plugin details. As you can see, there's a tutorial video for that plugin. So some of this will move kind of quickly, but that's just so that we can get to the good stuff, the, the actual compare frequencies plugin. So for this example, I have three different data sets. I have people's writing about their behaviors in the past week. So things like, this week I went shopping and I cooked dinner and I saw my family. We have people writing about relationships. So what, what comes to mind when you think about your friends and your family. And we have people writing about their personal values. We ask people to write, what's important to you as a person? And so we might expect that some words are going to appear much more frequently in one data set relative to the other two. So I would expect words like relationship and friend and family to appear at a much higher rate statistically in the relationship corpus relative to these other corpora. Now we can just look at the raw frequencies, but sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes it's helpful to actually have statistics that give us a clear sense of what's going on. And so that's what we'll do here. Now, in order to use this plugin, we first need to create a frequency list for each of these three corpora. So I'll walk through that process very quickly here. First, we need to load in the text files. And let's start with the behavior one. We need to tokenize our texts. And let's also just make sure we clean things up a little bit. We'll remove all of the stop words. And by default, this is just the punctuation and some common numbers. But we want a nice clean frequency list. So we're going to remove a bunch of additional stop words. We're going to remove a bunch of common English function words, uh, words like, you know, ra, ran, really, recent, um, adverbs, things like that. And let's also omit some kind of low word count observations. 25 is good. And let's also lemmatize. We'll use the English lemmatizer to simplify the data set. So we'll get nice clean frequency lists from this that take words like uh, relationship and relationships and just simplifies it and converts it all to the same word. Then we're going to calculate our frequency list. And we can do uh, m grams for this. Let's do let's do by grams. I'll use the log dice statistic. I'm not going to go into detail on, on what all of these things mean. I would definitely recommend watching this other tutorial video if you're curious to learn more about all of these settings and what they do. For the most part, you won't need to worry about them much. You might uh, get a little more conservative with some of these values, but that's about it. And then we'll save that frequency list to an output file. Now, we can name this whatever we want. I'm going to give it a, a name that makes it clear what it is. So we'll call it frequency and behavior. And you can see it's created an empty file here for that. That'll fill up when we run the analysis. Now, we want to do this for each of our corpora. We don't necessarily want to set the same thing up over and over, so a little shortcut is we can actually right-click this, copy it, and then click in some empty space so that we deselect that. Then we can right-click again and click the Paste button. And voila, it has copied in all of this pipeline from above. And you'll even notice, if you remember, we went in and we changed the stop words here, so we loaded up all the additional ones. That will be the case here as well. Now, 
if we double check this, we'll see that it's copied the settings for all of these other ones as well. So it's using the same input location and the same output location. Those we need to change. So we'll go ahead and change this one to the relationship text. So now it's going to read in the relationship text, go through the steps, calculate a frequency list, and then we want to change the output. We don't want to write these all to the same output file. So instead, we'll take this one and name it Frequency Relationship. Now if we didn't do that, what it would do is it would calculate the frequency list for the behavior texts, save it to that file, then it would just calculate the same thing again and save it, overwrite essentially that same file. And now, because we've changed the output location, it's not going to do that. And let's go ahead and do this for the third corpus as well. So we also want to do the same thing for the values writing. So let's go ahead and change this really quickly. And we'll make sure that we set the output setting to a new location. We'll call this frequency values. And you can see we've got three empty files. When we run the analysis, they'll each fill up with the frequencies. So let's go ahead and Actually, first, let's go ahead and just save our whole pipeline. So if we need to come back later, we've got it, just to be safe. So let's name this Butter Pipeline Frequency List. And then let's go ahead and run this. And it should go very quickly. There we go. It's already done. These are not huge data sets. Each one has maybe a few hundred texts in it. But let's take a look at what these look like. So this is the behavior frequency list. And you can see the words make sense. People talking about dinner, eating, working, watching, probably TV, time and behaviors. If we look at the relationships frequency list, totally different stuff. A little bit of overlap, things like friend, friend, family, and so on. But you can see that qualitatively, the words that are being used in this data set are different from the ones being used in this data set. They just have a different feel about them. And so let's take, for example, the word friend. In the behavior data set, it shows up 266 times in 40% of our texts or 40% of our documents. And let's go ahead and highlight that so it's easier to visually compare. And in this data set, that's a pretty big difference. It, it, the frequency is almost four times as high, and it appears in about 37% more of the observations relative to here. Now this is, this is where things get kind of tricky and interesting. Is this a meaningful difference? Is this a statistically telling difference? Is it instead the case that this is just a bigger data set, so the frequency is going to be higher? Is, this, is there some other kind of specific thing that actually, you know, maybe this difference isn't all that meaningful? This is where a lot of our statistics come into play. So what we do, and I won't go too deeply into the specifics here, but we generally look at a couple of different things and calculate a lot of statistics based on them. One of them is the observed frequency. So the observed frequency here of the word friend is 266. It's the number of times we actually saw the word appear. Here the observed frequency is higher, 957. Now there's also a statistic called the expected frequency. So this is a number that essentially we, uh, we can calculate how often would we expect this word to appear if all, all things were equal, essentially? You know, is, is this word appearing uh, at a much higher rate than we would expect from chance in this data set or this data set? And we can use this, this difference, this observed versus expected frequency values, and we can start to calculate some much more meaningful statistics from that basic information. Now, 
let's go ahead and move forward. So now we want to actually calculate some of those statistics that can tell us about the differences between these different data sets. So let's go ahead and add this plugin. And you'll notice that this plugin is under the standalone plugins umbrella. There's not a lot of these, but this means that this is a special plugin. So we don't need to set it up as part of a big pipeline like what you just saw with the other ones. This one can just be run on its own without having to connect it to a bunch of other things. Now let's go ahead and look at the settings of this. And it looks like there's a lot going on here, but it's actually not that bad. There's really two halves. The left half here is really about the corpora that we want to compare to each other. And so some of this is just about the files. So you can see that these are CSV files that it saved. And some of these are just settings for CSV files. And if you use Butter to generate your frequency lists, which you probably should, then these settings should be pretty familiar. These are the ones that it uses by default. If you use different settings when you are creating your frequency list for your output file, you would just use those here. Now, this is a little bit uh, fussy. So what it needs us to do is it needs us to pick the name of a corpus before we go ahead and add it into the data set. And so we've got these three, so we'll just go through in order. So we've got a behavior, a relationship, and a values corpus. So we'll do these one at a time. We'll call the first one behavior, then we'll choose the frequency list that we want to assign to it. And it's been added here now. And it's really important that you choose corpus names that are diagnostic of what each each of your data sets is. You'll see why once once we look at the output. Um, but generally speaking, you don't want to just name them, you know, Corpus 1, Corpus 2, Corpus 3. And so we've now added in all three of our corpora. And what this plugin is going to do, it's going to do what we would call a round robin comparison. So we'll compare all of the words in the behavior corpus against the relationship corpus. Then it will also compare behavior corpus versus values corpus and relationship corpus versus values corpus. So every possible kind of joint pairwise comparison, it will calculate those. Now we'll go over here to the output settings. So really the big one is we need to choose where we want to save our output. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the default uh, values here, the default file name, frequency comparison. And you can see it created an empty file. And this is the last setting. Now, when we're doing these uh, calculations of these statistics, there's the possibility that words will appear in some corpora, but not others. So what this puts us in is a position where we would, to do some of the calculations, we would have to divide by zero, which we really can't do mathematically. So, this will essentially skip those comparisons where a word appears in one data set but not another data set. It just won't do those computations. Now, I actually like to uncheck this because I want to know, even if a word appears 50 times in one data set and not at all in another, I would still like to get some metric that tells me, okay, this word is really prevalent in one but not another. If we uncheck this box, it takes those zero values and replaces them with a very small number, something that's less than one. So it essentially makes up a frequency of something like, I think right now, 0.5 or 0.05. And so it, it gives us a value for those comparisons anyways. Um, just, just something to know. I prefer to leave this unchecked, but I, either choice is valid depending on what you're trying to get done. Now what's going to happen then is when we run this, it's going to generate a bunch of statistical comparisons between them. And, and these are provided, the, the names of these are provided in the description box here. I'm not going to talk in much detail about what each of these statistics means. There's actually really kind of rich literature on this in the corpus linguistics world. Uh, Paul Rayson at Lancaster University has a, a webpage that not only can calculate these for you for individual terms, but also he provides links and, and citations for a bunch of really good resources to help you understand uh, kind of the strengths and weaknesses of each of these metrics. None of them are inherently better or worse than others. They're just 
have come from different places. So this is all set up, so let's go ahead and run this. And it, it does things very quickly. So let's go ahead and look at this output file. And there's a lot of stuff here, and this might seem a little overwhelming at first. So let's take this, expand it, and I'm going to make this a bit easier to read. So let's go ahead and first just zoom in a little bit. Let's also split the view so that we can kind of look around and, and see things more easily. And lastly, I think I'm going to expand all of these columns so that we can read the headers a bit better. So, let's start from the left and work our way down so we can start to really understand what all of these different columns mean. So the far left one, ngram, these are just the individual words. And these are going to be the words across each of the data sets. And you can see already that the column names tell us which corpora, which data sets um, each of the columns corresponds to. So these are the names that we punched in when we were setting the options for the plugin. Now the first one is going to be rank for each of the corpora. This essentially tells you what the um, rank order is for each word within each corpus. So what this tells us is that the word eat, for example, was the fourth most common word in the behavior corpus and it was the 300th most common word in the values corpus. Same for the word play, very common. It, it's one of the most frequent words in the behavior corpus, very infrequent, or relatively infrequent, I should say, in the other ones. Now you'll notice that some of the words have a rank of zero. What this means is that the frequency was zero. So the word bed, for example, did not actually appear in the relationships corpus. Although, strangely, it did appear five times in the values corpus. Very low rank, because it's not very common. I want to be one of those people who values sleeping in bed much, much more. So these are good. These are, these are good statistics. And we'll often find that as we go through the other statistics, we'll look back at these to understand the, the nature of these numbers. Now, as we go on, we can start to see that these are pairwise comparisons. So uh, in order, these are log likelihood, percent difference, the, the Bayes factor. I think this is effect size for log likelihood, relative risk, um, log ratio, and odds ratio. Again, I won't go too much into each of these. There's, there's uh, a lot of resources to help you understand what these mean. In most of these cases, what you can do is you can sort these columns to get a sense of the comparison between these two corpora, which words appear most strongly in one versus another. An exception to this is the log likelihood statistic, where larger sizes, uh, I'm sorry, larger numbers, just essentially correspond to larger differences, but doesn't really tell you about the direction of those differences. So this value doesn't tell us that the word people appears more in one data set specifically versus the other, just that it appears at a much higher uh, frequency in one versus the other, um, all things considered. But most of these other statistics, the, the size and, and direction gives us a sense of that, uh, of which corpus they appear more in. So if we sort the percent difference column uh, for behavior versus relationship comparison, we can see that these definitely look like behaviors, things like dinner, wake, shower, lunch. So probably this is telling us what words are really kind of diagnostic of or more unique to the behavior writing versus the relationship writing. Now if we sort the other way, uh, sort ascending, yep, we can see that at the other end of the spectrum, words romantic, friendship, close friend, trust, romantic relationship. These are words that are likely much more diagnostic of, of the relationship corpus. Now we can sanity check that. So we can go back over here and look and see, okay, this, this word romantic appears in the relationships corpus uh, with a frequency of 175. It's a rank of 18. It doesn't appear at all in the behavior corpus. So we know that this direction, words that are in this case uh, more negative, more strongly negative, 
are words that are much more diagnostic of, of the relationship corpus. And the same general uh, way of exploring these results um, works across most of these columns. So if we look at the relative risk, again, sorting high to low, we see that words like dinner, bed, wake, shower, and you'll find that if you look at each of these metrics in turn, generally speaking, the patterns will come out very similar. You'll see a lot of the same words uh, going in one direction versus the other. It's not always the same. So these are the romantic words for relative risk, um, but there's a lot of overlap. And you'll see as we go on, then we get to the next comparison. So these metrics then are all, oops, uh, comparing the behavior versus the values corpus. And so if we look at the percent differences here, we have words like value, treat, guide, God, respect, honesty, belief, wrong, faith. These are words that are clearly much more diagnostic of the values corpus. And if you're not sure of the di direction, if you see these numbers and you see these words and you can't really intuitively figure out which corpus they go to, you'll want to just scroll back to the left and, and do kind of a sense check of the, the relative frequencies and, and the ranks. And one last thing that I'll say is that you can also calculate a lot of additional statistics from these metrics. So for example, and take a grain, take, take this with a grain of salt, it's been a while since I've calculated some of these statistics, I believe that you can calculate the probability from the odds ratio very simply by essentially taking the odds ratio score and then dividing it by the odds ratio score plus one. So if we do that, this score is essentially probability score that runs from, from zero to one. And what this tells us essentially, it's again a variation of the same type of information but uh, let me go ahead and copy this, paste value, so that we can sort it. Excellent. So, you know, you can see clearly if we sort this from high to low, things that are approaching a probability of one, these are words that are, um, you know, essentially romantic in, in nature. So that's clearly the reference corpus here um, tells us that. But if we go to the other end, essentially we get the same basic information, but the other direction. So these are clearly value words as the probabilities approach zero. Um, you know, religions try faith. And in most cases, what I find is that most of the time people care about these differences. What are the words that really separate the two corpora? Which words are unique to values writing versus relationship writing? What are the words that are unique to um, texts from one era versus another era, texts from one company versus another company, one business versus another business, etc. But, and I show you the, the p-value probability because it's an easy way to, to interpret this, sometimes you actually do care about what words are really common uh, across these corpora. So we calculate the probability from these odds ratios, so as we approach this 50% mark, these are words that are really essentially being used at roughly the same rate across each of the corpora between these two. And so if we look at, at uh, these words here in the relationship and the uh, values corpora, yeah, this is all very comparable here. They're being used at roughly the same, same rates. Now, there are going to be a lot of cases in linguistics in particular where this is actually really meaningful, in particular forensic linguistics. So what you'll find often is that um, there's, there's some very famous cases out there of uh, people who essentially, we'll say, uh, have been arrested and have written a confession. And then later, someone asks, did they really write this confession or did the police write it for them? And, and essentially falsify that confession. And you can do some statistics. So if you have a corpus of texts that you know were written by police officers, police officer reports and so on, then you can look for words in the confession that's under question and find out, does it share a lot of words with that 
it with the police corpus. And if so, what you'll find, or essentially the conclusion what that you will see people draw is that because there are a lot of words that are really infrequently shared um, among, we'll say, like police corpora and Yelp reviews or something, if you see those words showing up at roughly the same rates between the police corpus and the questioned confession, that can tell you that maybe they were written by the same person or, or by the same group of people, for example. And that's it. That's how we use the Compare Frequencies plugin for Butter. Hopefully now you will be able to compare the frequencies of words and engrams across all of your favorite data sets. Thanks for watching.